Good evening and welcome. My name is Teresa Smith-Levin. I am the founder and executive director of Central Florida Vocal Arts, and we are so excited to have you joining us this evening. Thank you. For a brief lecture recital and a preview of our upcoming production of The Sound of Music, we're going to take a few pieces from the classic work and reframe them in the context of the relevant themes that we see as we're looking at the crisis in Ukraine today. And I am so lucky to be joined by our amazing production director, Brandy Eliazar. She is fabulous and wonderful, and she is going to be co-hosting this evening as we tell you a little bit more about the themes that maybe you haven't recognized when you're watching the piece in the past. So moving to our first theme, um, we had the privilege of speaking to Dr. Mayhill Fowler, who is an expert on um, the crisis in Ukraine, Russian and Ukrainian politics. She's a doctor at, uh, at Stetson University, and she helped us sort of formulate some of these themes that we're gonna talk about today. So, Brandy, would you like to share a little bit more about that conversation? Sure, absolutely. So, um, I am a big Sound of Music fan. Um, how many of you, it's one of your favorite musicals? All right, yes, absolutely. Um, and um, like many of you, I'm sure I grew up anticipating the one time of year you could watch it on TV and fell in love with Julie Anders and, and Christopher Plummer in those iconic roles. Um, so as a director, um, The Sound of Music has become one of my favorite shows. I've gotten to direct several productions of it over the years. Uh, but it's difficult, I think, when you love a show so much and you do it over and over and over again to sort of find um, fresh new thought about it and new energy. So I was particularly excited when Teresa reached out to me uh, and wanted to really think of this production in a different way. And as not a particularly political or up on current events person, when she first started talking about the parallels between the production and the war in Ukraine, I was intrigued, but didn't have a lot of information. Uh, so as she mentioned, the first place we sort of started was this conversation with Dr. Fowler, and she really opened our eyes to some of, um, a, you know, a lot of what's going on in our world today that I just, hadn't really realized or picked up from what I was reading or watching on the news and how much it parallels sort of what is happening in the sound of music. So um, it was a really beautiful conversation and we were really able to um, find uh, some key points that we wanted to highlight and to add, um, particularly through our interpretation of the production. Absolutely. So one of the things, if you're not familiar with Central Florida Vocal Arts or Opera del Sol, part of our mission is to use our platform in performing arts to create social good, to create a better community. And in this sense, we're looking at a global community. How can we start a dialogue around what is going on? How can we raise awareness and how can we raise funds to help those in need? So hopefully we will achieve all of those things this evening. So one of the first things that uh, Dr. Fowler identified is before you are involved in a military conflict, there's lots of tension politically, 
you're just living your life. And so these are normal people, normal teenagers going along and they have expectations of their future. Who has children in this room? I have, I have little children. I have two and, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. So we're not talking about college yet, but 16, 17 year olds thinking about just starting their life, having those first romances. And we see that embodied in Liesl and Rolf in the first act. 16 going on 17, one of those classic numbers that we all know. They're just going along excited about all the prospects that life has to offer them and who they are when they start the show versus who they are when they end the show. Rolf is you know, a young man, he has military ambition, but by the end he is uh, a Nazi. And we, we forget oftentimes, I think in our rehearsal last night we were talking about this, Rolf does end up doing the right thing in that moment, but, but he is a Nazi in, in the um, German regime. And so seeing him go from this sweet boy that we see in 16 going on 17 to where we end up, and Liesl who becomes a refugee having to leave her home. And it's important to keep in mind as we frame this, that the Von Trapp family were real people who left Austria and fled to the United States, lived in Vermont, and never went back to their home. So taking a moment to think about what that would be like to leave the family and the community and never go back. And so this sweet classic musical, when you really look at what it's talking about, has a lot of depth and heaviness that if we take the time to consider can be really meaningful. So in Ukraine, approximately 4 million children have been displaced from their educational settings at this point. Uh, the New York Times recently did an article where they talk about the ways that Ukrainian teachers are trying to continue to teach children in bomb shelters, in basements, so that they can have some continuity in their life. Dancers, singers, artists, and even when we think of President Zelensky, are, are doing things that they had never expected to do. Ballet dancers, directors are now having to flee their homeland, they're having to take on different roles, some of them are in the military, just a completely different view on their future than what they anticipated. And then, um, unfortunately, one of the things that is not reported as much, but that Dr. Fowler brought to light is the Russian war in Ukraine equally is targeting civilians as it is military bases. That there's a lot of loss of life when we're talking about civilians and children. So just really heartbreaking to think about the innocence and naivety of youth and that loss that we see in military conflict. So I would like to welcome out our two actors who will be playing uh, Liesl and Rolf in our production. We have Madison Rivera and Joseph Truitt, and they will be seeing 16 going on 17. I'm gonna let Brandy tell you a little bit more about what's going on in this scene. All right, so for anyone who's not familiar with the piece, um, we have Liesl Von Trapp, who is the eldest of the Von Trapp children at 16. Uh, she is uh, very resistant to the idea of having a new governess in Maria, who's just arrived in the house to care for her and her brothers and sisters, uh, primarily because she feels like she's too grown up at this point to be taken care of by an adult. Um, and uh, one of the reasons is because she has a budding romance with uh, the telegram boy, who is Rolf. Um, and uh, in this scene, they have uh, snuck out after hours. He's come to visit her um, after he's delivered a telegram and uh, they're getting to spend a little time together. Okay. I don't worry about your father. The only one I worry about is his daughter. <laughs> Me, why? How old are you, Liesl? 16. What's wrong with that? You wait, little girl, on an empty stage for fate to turn the light on. Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on. To write on. You are 16, going on 17. Baby, it's time to think. Better beware, be canny and careful. Baby, you're on the brink. You are 16, going on 17. Fellows will fall in line. Eager young lads and waves and cats will offer you food and wine. Totally unprepared are you to 
face a world of men. Timid and shy and scared are you of things beyond your ken. You need someone older and wiser telling you what to do. I am 17, going on 18. I'll take care of you. in the show, um, particularly the roles of the Baroness von Schrader and Max Detweiler. Uh, we know these two characters as um, the uh, fiance to Captain von Trapp when we first meet him, and then um, one of his closest friends in Max Detweiler, who kind of acts as like an uncle to the children and is a close family friend. Uh, we're looking at these two characters in particular because Every time that I've had the opportunity to participate in a production of The Sound of Music, uh, it's very interesting to talk about people's reaction to change. Uh, when we're in the midst of some sort of um, political upheaval or conflict in this way, uh, oftentimes we're all sort of forced to pick a, a side or opinion or take a certain stand. Now one of the things that we love about Captain Von Trapp in the show is he is our sort of, um, you know, very uh, morally disciplined, um, stand up, um, unafraid to speak his mind, 
uh, character in the piece, uh, despite all the pressure from lots of different places and facing, uh, you know, the possible loss of safety for his family and his career, he still stands firm in um, his belief that the new regime, the Nazi regime, is wrong. And so we love him for that. He becomes our hero in the piece. But we have to remember that we're looking through that from the lens of where we are now in 2022, that we now know what ultimately happened in that conflict and, and what bad guys the Nazis turned out to be. So of course we love Captain Von Trapp for standing up against them. But at the time in 1938, when this piece took place, right, we didn't yet know what Hitler and his regime would eventually become. And so for Elsa and for Max, you know, they're trying to navigate a world that they can possibly still live in, that it's still beneficial to them. How can they get along with these people? How can they keep their life that they've carefully built from being disrupted? And so they act more as bystanders um, until eventually uh, Elsa and the captain have to part ways because of their differing opinions. Uh, Max, of course, we know eventually uh, does end up supporting the Von Trapps and escaping. So when a push comes to shove and he has to cast his lot, he stands with them and helps them uh, to escape out of um, Salzburg. So it was just a really interesting conversation about how, you know, we're still sort of in that place today. Uh, one of the things that uh, Dr. Fowler helped us understand was that just like with um, the Anschluss, the, the takeover of Germany over Austria in 1938, um, to Russia, the, the situation with Russia and Ukraine is the same in that it, it is an unprovoked act of aggression, right? A country taking over another um, purely and able to be able to do that. It's not a, it's not a conflict on both sides. And so now Ukrainians are faced with, do we participate in this new regime? Will that make our lives easier? Do we stand up? Do we escape? All of those same questions that our characters from The Sound of Music had to face back in 1938. So we are going to look at now the, sound, the song No Way to Stop It, which is Elsa and Max's attempt to convince the captain that he should see things their way. Absolutely, and I'd like to welcome out Brian Hayes, Christy Duffer, and Sean Powell. You dear, attractive, dewy-eyed idealist, Today you have to learn to be a realist. You may be bent on doing deeds of daring do, but up against the shark, what can a herring do? Be wise, compromise. Compromise and be wise. Let them think you're on their side, be non-committal. I will not bow my head to the men I despise. You won't have to bow your head, just stoop a little. Why not to learn to put your faith and your reliance? on an obvious and simple fact of science. A crazy planet full of crazy people is somersaulting all around the sky. And every time it turns another somersault, another day goes by. And there's no way to stop it. No, there's no way to stop it. No, you can't stop it even if you try. Somersaulting at a cockeyed angle, we make a cockeyed circle round the sun. And as we circle back to where we started from, another year has run. And there's no way to stop it, no, there's no way to stop it if the earth wants to roll around the sun. You're a fool if you worry, you're a fool if you worry about anything but little number one. That all-absorbing character That fascinating creature That super special feature Me! So every 
star in every whirling planet and every constellation in the sky revolve around the center of the universe. A lovely thing you call I. And there's no way to stop it, no, there's no way to stop it, and I know, no, I cannot tell you why. Let's try. And as long as I'm living, just as long as I'm living, there'll be nothing else as wonderful as I. Um, when I was in grad school singing in Austria and in the mountains in Austria a lot of different restaurants hotels are called Edelweiss you can find Edelweiss growing in the mountains and it's very much so this point of pride we all have these different things that we think of with our own patriotism that's that for them um, and so one of the things I want to talk about is a little quick music lesson um, what is a folk song so a folk song actually comes from the German word Volk which means people so a folk song just means a song of the people. It's not an opera aria, it's not an art song, it's something that you might sing to children when they're little, a lullaby, something that is meant to be sung by the average person. And so Edelweiss uh, exemplifies that very iconic folk style. And one of the things that Dr. Fowler told us about is there um, is a song called Chevrona Ruta, which is red flower and sounds very similar in a way to Edelweiss. And so you draw this parallel between what Edelweiss does and this song. And I actually want to play a uh, short excerpt of it for you because when you hear Sean come back and sing Edelweiss, sort of analyzing as a musician, what similarities you hear? How are the vocal lines similar? How is the texture of the piece related? So this is Shibrona Ruta. <laughs> but a lot of similarities there. And I think it's important in this moment to remember that 12 million people have left Ukraine since the beginning of the war. That's 12 million people is unfathomable in a way. And so the loss of everything that you know. I was born in Winter Park, High, uh, Winter Park Hospital. I have lived here my whole life. All of my family is here. To think that all of that is gone and you're just adrift in the world, to put that yourself in those people's shoes, I think is so important when you're looking at this piece as the Fontrass lead, what would their life have been like? So with that, I want to welcome back out Sean Powell, who is our Captain Fontrass, and he's going to sing Edelweiss for us. Edelweiss. 
So when he's singing Edelweiss, in that moment, he is saying goodbye to his homeland, his friends, his family, the mountains that have meant so much to him um, as he tries uh, to get his family safely out of Austria and to hopefully make a new life for them elsewhere. All right, moving on, we are going to look at um, our last piece for tonight, which is uh, going to be Climb Every Mountain. Um, first of all, uh, we wanted to talk about this piece, um, particularly because it sort of serves a dual purpose in the show. We hear it twice. The first time we hear it, uh, the mother abbess sings it to Maria um, when she returns to the nunnery after having spent several months with the Von Trapps and realizing that she's falling in love with Captain Von Trapp. And she's feeling very conflicted about the path that it looks like her life is starting to take. Originally, she had um, plan to pledge her life to God to become a nun and now she's experiencing all these new feelings that might prevent her from following that dream and so the mother abbess uh, sings this song to her in a way to encourage her to sort of experience life to the fullest to embrace everything that life has to offer to climb every mountain to ford every stream uh, and so it gives her the courage to return to the Von Trapp household and uh, follow up on those feelings for the captain. Um, and of course, we're so glad that she does. But then we hear it again at the very end of the show when the Von Traps are escaping and they are literally climbing over the mountains um, to get them to safety on the other side. And so it becomes sort of an anthem of, um, of, of hope and being able to overcome the insurmountable. And that idea of hope, particularly with this refugee experience, is very, very important. Um, it is what keeps you going, right? Uh, that despite all the struggles um, for the people of Austria, and in this particular case of the people of Ukraine, families being separated, the loss of their home, their belongings, the dreams of what their lives were going to be, um, they still have to have that hope, that fire, that desire to motivate them to continue. And that, you know, dreams change, right? And they take a different path, but it doesn't make the new dream any less important or special than the original. 
So, we're climbing every mountain. Um, our fabulous uh, hostess for this evening, uh, Teresa Smith Levin, is going to be singing the piece for us in addition to all of her work that she does with Central Florida Vocal Arts um, as a fabulous producer. Uh, she also is a tremendously talented singer and actress, and she is playing our mother abbess in this production. So, we welcome her, and this is Climb Every Mountain. United for Peace, which is uh, an initiative to reach individual artists who are displaced because of the conflict in Ukraine. And so I would love for you to come tell us just a little bit more, Ricardo, about that effort. And then we do have a video that we'll share from one of those artists that you're helping. Um, would you like to play the video? Please? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Let's start with that. Yeah. Hello, my name is Dima. I'm a dancer from Ukraine. Before the war, I worked as a ballet dancer journey to the world. In between tour he worked as a dance teacher and probably visited all kinds of the entertainment and introductive dance blog in the Instagram application called Ghost Ballet. The work made it impossible for, uh, for me to teach people how to dance, to record my own videos and help to improve myself physically, psychologically and mentally. I really want the world to know that Ukraine is not only an agro-industrial country, but also a country of incredible, interesting and talented people who want to give a vibrant world with their and incredible friends. Together with you, we win to be able to overcome the enemy 
who does not and like living things that will prepare us. Art and above all people cannot exist in the condition of the handset, terrorism and food. The people of Ukraine do not want war. The people of Ukraine want peace, love and friendship in the show world. Together we return peace and the prosperity not only to Ukraine, but also the world. Thank you for your attention. Yes. I don't want to give, give you my back weather. Thank you so much, Teresa, and uh, it's been an education. Thank you so much when we give them my round of applause. Learning so much from the similarities between um, the sound of music and what is happening in Ukraine. How did I get involved in this situation with Ukraine? Um, Teresa, Terry Olson, they know I always recording, always sponsoring, and always helping the arts, uh, our artists, because uh, sometimes they're their talents and their uh, contributions to society again, uh, you know, get undermined and thrown under the carpet. But uh, sincerely working with so many artists from Ukraine, so many ballerinas, I do a lot of video, I do a lot of uh, recordings with them. Um, when the war started, I knew so many of them and it touched me tremendously with Anastasia uh, wrote a piece, Anastasia, one of uh, my friends, dear friends, uh, which we did one of the concerts based on her story, uh, described the moment when her life turned to pieces. You're living a normal life and tomorrow morning, all of a sudden, you, all you hear is bombs, uh, shootings, uh, <laughs> everything turns upside down in a moment, in an instant. And uh, I video chat with a lot of them and I have seen firsthand, uh, even now, uh, you know, the, the fear on their faces and I get terrified when I hear uh, bombs and shelling as we are uh, participating on video chats and they had to run to shelter or they had to go uh, take cover. Uh, so it's really terrifying. And um, let me ask you, uh, one of the things that shocked me so much during the journey that Anastasia was taking, you know, I was sponsoring her from uh, Kiev to uh, Holland, where she's now safely with a family who is hosting her. And um, how many had a good warm soup today? Did anyone had a good meal, good lunch today? Well, be grateful because the moment Anastasia finally crossed the border after 10 days of hesitation, whether she was going to leave Ukraine or not, uh, she crossed the border finally to Poland. You know what the first thing she told me? they gave me warm soup. Because during that process of 10 days of uncertainty, she didn't really have a good meal. Um, I had another friend in Dnipro, in the east, you know, which they kept shelling and bombing all the time. She was trying to leave uh, Dnipro and uh, she had a accident. Uh, this guy crashed her car and she couldn't leave. When they, uh, people came uh, uh, to her rescue and help her, they detained the guy who happened to be a spy, a Russian spy. When they pulled her, uh, the documents, uh, she didn't want me to post any of this because she's afraid for her life. So, uh, but imagine the life that you have to be living and the fear that you have to be living that the moment you crash, you crash in, I guess, against uh, a Russian spy. Now, uh, I don't have anything about the Russian people. I gotta tell you, I have a lot of friends, a lot of artists from Russia. It's not their fault and they are really hurt as well for what is happening. Um, but, you know, Dima is a, is a great kid and uh, he's been asking me for help. Uh, we've been sponsoring him as well as many other artists. And, uh, you know, as all we can do is uh, we cannot reach out to every single artist I know, but at least we can contribute little by little with some of them. Uh, you know, just in the case of Ira Prosenko, a fantastic ballerina. Now she's 24 months pregnant. She got weeks. married weeks. Uh, weeks. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the correction. Uh, so I can see uh, I, I'm not a, I, I'm not a mom. I, don't, uh, I get confused. But um, you know, it's, it's so sad that she cannot leave because now she's trapped in um, uh, in the eastern part of Ukraine. She has nowhere to go, and um, you know, she's living with her mom and. Uh, She's pregnant with Jesenia, 
24 weeks this end year. So uh, again, uh, I can go on and on and on with stories uh, of sadness, but there are also stories of happiness. Yulia Mosalenko, the uh, first ballerina, prima ballerina from the National Ballet of Ukraine. Now she's happily living in uh, Miami. Uh, Miami City Ballet uh, welcomed her. Uh, you know, uh, Holland has been very welcoming a lot of the artists. But so not everything is a sad story. Sadly, uh, for many of these artists, if you think about it, today I displaced you from your home and I throw you in a complete strange country. Uh, where you don't speak the language, where you don't know where you're going to sleep the next day, and uh, it is terrifying. So, you know, uh, hope your kids love your family and enjoy the, the great uh, life that you have to have right now because it can change all in an instant. So, uh, you know, my heart goes out to the brave and uh, beautiful people and the artists of Ukraine and uh, the, all the refugees in general. But thank you so much for what you're doing and for continuing. Uh, let's not forget that the war still continues as of now. Thank you so much. And I also want to introduce one more friend. This is Terry Olson of the Orange County Arts and Cultural Affairs. He's going to tell us a little bit more about some upcoming events where you can also support and learn more about the people and culture of Ukraine. Thank you. Very apropos to tonight's um, discussion, on Tuesday, the 23rd, Fusion Fest does a monthly diversitastic dining experience that looks at a particular culture. And it'll be Ukraine. And so people who buy a ticket get a full meal and there's music, dance, whatever. But we'll have Greg Dawson talking about his mother who escaped the Nazi invasion of Ukraine. And we'll have Katerina who just came in April with her daughter escaping the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So that theme will be carried out in two real life stories that will be presented at that Diversitastic Dining Experience Ukraine. Also at that event will be a 10 foot puppet of a Ukrainian lady. It'll look something like this. Fusion Fest has big parade puppets that we take out to different places. And the weekend before that, the 19th, 20th and 21st, is a community puppet build where we are building three puppets. One of them is that Ukraine lady, one of them is a Jamaican man, and one of them is an America, Native American. Um, all that you can find at fusionfest.org if you want to find out more about that. And we should also mention that on the 28th of this month, 27. 27th of this month, there will be uh, a performance at Steinmetz Hall of a ballet company from Kiev that. Um, is on tour indefinitely because they can't go home. So those are some of the things happening. And uh, in the back is a little flyer about uh, the Ukrainian puppet build. If you want to volunteer to come do some paper mache or some painting or sewing or anything, putting together a big puppet, you're welcome. Thank you, Terry. Oh. Oh, no, we are here. Um, all right, so. All of these wonderful ways to get involved, learn more about Ukraine, and support those efforts. Um, of course, The Sound of Music, our production, is taking place next weekend, August 13th and 14th, also at the Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. The first two shows have actually already sold out, so yay. But we added a third one, so if you're still wanting to get tickets, those are available for Sunday evening at 8 p.m., and we would love to have you join us. I want to welcome back to the stage our actors who are still here. We've got um, Joseph and Madison headed off, but we have Christy, Brian, and Sean to join us on stage. And I know so oftentimes when um, I'm at an event and somebody finds out that I'm an actor or an opera singer, they have a lot of questions about the process, what that's like, um, about why I started a nonprofit. So I wanted to just give this opportunity for the audience to ask me questions that you may have of these actors, of these singers, of Brandy or I. Does anyone have any questions? Don't be afraid. <laughs> yes? Well, just the basic, you know, for a two night performance, how much do you rehearse? So uh, this is actually a pretty tight timeline that we're on. Are we five weeks this time? We started on July 11th. So. July 11th was our first rehearsal. So we cast back in mid-June, and then we've been rehearsing four to five days a week. 
um, usually four hour rehearsals since July 11th. Um, we're in really good shape though right now. We've been doing runs because we're going into tech the show this weekend. Um, so usually about four weeks at a minimum, but a lot of processes go for about eight weeks. Yes, any other questions? Yes. are really passionate about our community and um, from the time I was very young passionate about singing and music but how do we also do good and so this is the way that we bring those two passions together so thank you very much yes thank you um, and thank you to the library for hosting us this is actually the first event that we've done here but hopefully the first of many that we will do any other questions that we might have yes well, I'm interested in how singers, professionals, such as yourselves, continue to improve your technique and your skill level. Now, what does that process look like? Who wants to take that one? <laughs> Christy. We now need Christy. Christy sure. in charge. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, so, uh, that's a great question. Um, mostly, you know, in this show, especially all the cast, we are all professionals. You know, you can consider us professionals. However, we're always students as well. So I do teach voice lessons, but then I also, you know, rely on a voice teacher myself. And we all, um, at, all at some point, take lessons with varying teachers, coaches, always looking for different ways to improve our technique. Um, you're never done learning. So, um, so yeah, a lot of teachers, coaches. Um, master classes, things like that. Um, always, the education never stops. So, gentlemen, do you want to add on to that? Sure. Um, I, I think that every time, um, as an artist, that you get a chance to um, learn any material, whether it's a, a, just a song or it's a full show, um, I, I like to think of it. It's an opportunity for me to to get better. Um, and a unique aspect of this show is that the three of us. But the four of us worked on this a year and a half ago, um, and it never got to be performed because of um, a, an illness, um, COVID. Um, <laughs> oh, that one. Um, and and I was just I, I was thinking the other night that um, you know we got pretty far into rehearsals uh, before it was what a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking all the different elements that I was seeing differently about the captain. Uh, this time than I did even a year and a half ago, um, and and I think if I did this show again for five years from now, I would probably see a lot of things completely different as well. Um, so even though it's the same material, it's the same script, it's as an opportunity as an actor, as performer, is to is to look at it in a different way. Um, you know, a lot of what we're doing today with talking about Ukraine. Um, you know, a year and a half ago, that we wasn't maybe the same correlation in in that exact moment in time, uh, but today it is. So it, it's it's fascinating as an artist to sink your teeth into something that is still alive and breathing and growing. Absolutely. Any other questions? That was really good, Sean. It's <laughs> profound. <laughs> yes. I'm curious with this product, this obviously is not a new work. Have any of the cast members been in productions of the Sound of Music before this, and have they also worked together before? Absolutely. So we have Brian, what, you've done like, I feel like 10 shows with me before. I cast Brian a lot. Um, <laughs> Brian has done a lot with us. We were prepping this together, the four of us, previously with a different company. We weren't producing, it was Osceola Arts where we were learning it before. Um, so working a lot with um, the, a, a good group of people that we really love. Christy teaches for us. 
This is the first time that we've brought Sean on board, so hopefully we'll get to keep him. He's a lot of fun. Um, and I did this show before, and I played Christy's role, actually. So have you guys ever done this show before? No. First time? I haven't. No. You, this is your fourth. My fourth production, yeah. This is my second production of this. <laughs> Um, so I do think it, it was funny because the first time I auditioned, she asked me if I would go to the callback for the Baroness as well. And I said, eh, no, I want to do something different. So you do sort of cycle through different roles in your career and where you are in life as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. So um, it, it's not my favorite show. I, I <laughs> That's OK. Was, I, I hate Shrek. I, I hate Shrek. I also don't like Fiddler on the Roof. It's okay not to have favorite shows. What? <laughs> I don't like Fiddler. What are you, a monster? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I just always took the political side more than the musical side. Uh -huh. But um, how old are your youngsters and how do they train? Our babies are cute. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did, yeah. No. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how old they are, but. Age gets in the show. Our Gretel, she's tiny for her age, but she's eight, I want to say. She's eight, yeah. Yep. She's and our youngest. She's the bitty baby, and so we have eight to 17 mm -hmm. year olds, um, and they are just doing wonderfully. Their choreography always is so impressive to me. They have this pillow fight scene that boggles my mind how they get it every time. So um, a big part of our mission as an organization is to create a pipeline for talent in this community to cultivate professional talent. So being able to work with them in our summer camps, in our studio lessons, and then bring them to the professional stage, because we're gonna be joined by Space Coast Symphony Orchestra. So a full 26 piece orchestra alongside professional singers in the Dr. Phillips Center. That's a really important um, experience that sort of is a touchstone for an eight-year-old life as she goes on if this is something that she wants to pursue that can sort of be transformative so we love to give those experiences to our young people as well and i think there was another question over this way anyone over here yes. I, I think you just answered this thank you and i'm wondering if you were going to be um, incorporating an orchestra or yes a really good one they're, they're quite good, actually. Aaron Collins, who is yeah. the conductor, is one of my favorite conductors to work under. He's just a fabulous mu musician. And so um, they're out at Space Coast. So after we do this weekend in Orlando, the following weekend we'll actually do a show in Melbourne and a show in Vero Beach to um, sing for those audiences as well. Thank you. Well, it has just been such a delight performing for you all this evening. I want to leave you with one final piece. If you're moved by um, any of the performances this evening or any of the discussion around these themes, you can make a donation. It will go right back to Artists United for Peace, what uh, Ricardo told us about. Um, and you can do it very simply with a text to give to UKRN41444. And uh, that's a tax deductible donation. Those will go right back to those displaced artists that he shared with you a little bit ago. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a great night. Thank you.